my name is uh, Captain Albert. I'm with the West Hartford Fire Department, obviously. So here we got our buddy, Mr. Padua. He's a paramedic and a firefighter. So we go on a whole bunch of different calls on the fire department here in West Hartford. And uh, we don't just go to fires, we go to alarms, we go to car accidents, and sometimes hazmat calls or you know, bad stuff gets spilled that can hurt you. Uh, and we go on medical calls. So anytime you see an ambulance going anywhere, we go. And that's why we have Scott, who also is a paramedic. So Scott has gone through a whole bunch of training and he works uh, sort of directly through the hospital on the way to provide the paramedic service to the citizens of West Hartford. And Mike and I came on together. We, we got on the fire department together 18 years ago. So Mike is a chauffeur or an apparatus operator. And his job is to drive the truck and operate all the, all the things on it, all the pumps and make sure all the water gets flowing good. So uh, he's got a really important job too. And uh, really, we all think about his job as being the most important job in the whole fire ground. Because without him, we can't get the fire out, right? So we carry all kinds of special tools on the truck and do all kinds of things. So since we have such a diverse group here, let's talk about some really, really, really basic things, okay? And I see some age groups. I got like two-year-olds and some older ones up to what? What do we got? I see some teenagers over there, right? So anybody recognize what this is? Anybody tell me what this is? Anybody? Yeah, it's a fire alarm. It's a smoke detector, right? You guys might see this in your house up on the ceiling somewhere. Do you know what noise it makes? What noise is it? What noise does this make? Anybody know? Oh, it goes beep beep. Does it? Oh, like that? Oh. So loud. So if you hear that noise in your house, what does that mean? What should you do? Go outside of the house and go to your special spot away from the house. Oh my gosh, you're very well educated. Did you know that? Did somebody teach you that? Yeah. Yeah? You learned it and you remembered it. So did you guys hear what she said? She said if you hear that noise in your house, you should get out of your house and go to your special spot. That special spot is something you guys as a family set up long before you ever hear this noise, okay? And that special spot should not be miles away. It should be outside of your home or your condo or your apartment or whatever you live in place where everybody knows where they're going to meet and the reason why we say that is so when we show up there we could say go up to your mom or dad or you and say is everybody out and you look around you count yeah I got my brother my sister everybody and then we could go put the fire out but if somebody's not there we go and grab them as quickly as we possibly can all right so do you know what phone number we use to activate the fire department anybody what who said that? Good job. 911. Very simple number. So 911 gets you a couple different things, not just the fire department. Gets you a few other things. Anybody else know who else comes if you call 911? Ambulance. The ambulance, yep. So in West Hartford, if the ambulance comes, you also get Scott, the paramedic, right? What else could you get with 911? The police. The police, correct, correct. So do you order pizza through 911? No. No, you're not gonna get a pizza. So we don't play games with 911, we call for an emergency, okay? So let's talk about the police for a minute. If you see somebody that may be lurking around your house or you're a little nervous about something, or you're scared because you, you are nervous something bad's happening, you could call 911 and a policeman comes and make sure everything's okay. If you What's that? A bear at our house. You saw a bear? Did you call 911? <laughs> no? Was the bear a friendly bear? Was it Yogi Bear? No? Well, bears happen. Bears come to West Hartford. Some of them live up on the mountain over there. So if you have like a family member, let's say mom or dad is not feeling good or you can't wake them up or whatever's going on or they feel really, really, really sick and they can't get up and help themselves, you call 911, you get the ambulance, right? What if you have like, uh, I don't know, you're watching a TV show and you see smoke coming up from behind the television. What number do you call? 911. Oh, what do you get? Um, ambulance, police, and a uh, fire truck. 
Right, but in that case, you might want a fire truck to come, right? <laughs> so 901 is a very good, helpful tool. Works for uh, the nationwide in the United States. 901 works. And you hear this alarm and you get out, right? All right, Scott. Let's show them what we look like if we show up on our uh, fire truck for a fire problem. So Scott's going to put on this uh, all this gear he wears. He's going to look a little different when he's all set up. Look at what I have. So one of the things he's going to put on is this big bottle on his back. Now, can everybody take a deep breath? You let it out. Nice and clean air, right? Feels good. You're out in the fresh air in the park. Well, in fires, do you think the air is clean all the time? No, it's smoke, right? You guys ever been to a campfire? Yeah. Yeah, well, you roast marshmallows, all that good stuff. Yeah. And when you're at your campfire, where does the smoke go? At the campfire, where does the smoke go? Does it go up? Right? And, they, and the campfire is nice and warm down here? Yep, but up and you're correct. Sometimes in my face, right? So Scott is wearing all this good stuff. Who likes playing in the snow? Anybody like playing in the snow? Yeah, I do. I love it. So when you go play in the snow in the wintertime, do you put your bathing suit and flip-flops on? No. Why not? What do you wear? You wear snow gear. Oh, snow gear. Why do you wear snow gear? Um, because snow can be cold. That's right. So you put snow gear on to keep you nice and warm, right? So we wear all this stuff because we go into fires not to keep us warm, but to keep us cool, to protect us from all the heat, all right? So Scott's going to put a mask on just like you would a Halloween. Does anybody like Darth Vader or Star Wars or any of that stuff? No? Alright, maybe I'm too old. <laughs> well, he puts a mask on. Now, does Scott look any different than he did a little while ago? Yeah. Is he scary? No, he's still a handsome guy in there, right? Is he friendly? Yeah. Yes, he is. You guys hear? I want you to listen. Hear him breathe. Listen. Do you hear that noise? Sounds like air moving. But that's the air going from the bottle through regulator in his mask. Gives him nice clean air inside of his mask. So Scott doesn't walk around the house like a, a really good dude like this. He's not all that brave. Because where does smoke go? Up. And then it builds up in your house and it starts to bank down. And it's hard to see. So Scott stays low because all the clean air is nice and low. And he's looking for you. So Scott's going to yell out for you because he wants you to hear him. And he wants you to respond to him. So let's hear what Scott sounds like, because he's different, he's got a mask on. What's he sound like? Hello? Hello? Anybody in here? Hello? Can you hear me? So if you hear him in your house and you hear that guy, yell out to him as best you can, okay? So he can come help you get out of your house in case you can't get out on your own, all right? So if you have a fire alarm go off, we already know what that sounds like, right? It makes beeps, right? And you can't get out of your house because the smoke or the fire is, is a problem. We're coming to get you. This is what we're going to look like. Do we hide in the closet? No. Do we hide under your bed? No. No. You want to be near your window as much as possible. Um, try to open it if you can. Yell for us and we're going to come grab you. All right, should we let Scott out? Is it warm? Yeah, it's a warm day. We'll let Scott out of his equipment. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott. Okay. So on the hot days, you guys like to play with water? Yeah. We like to play with water all the time. So we're going to show you something really, really quick on this truck. We're going to start it up. It's going to idle. We're not going to turn any sirens on. We'll turn all the lights on. We're going to pull what we call our bumper line. It's a hose line for little fires like car fires or dumpster fires. And we're going to spray some water. You guys can see what it looks like. Scott, the fireman, who's not playing a paramedic at the moment, is going to run that nozzle. And you're going to see the different patterns it could have and how we run water. So it's kind of like your garden hose, just bigger. 
So for your parents out there, this truck carries 500 gallons of water. It pumps 2,000 gallons per minute. So if you have 500 gallons of water, you teenage math people, and it pumps up to 2,000 gallons a minute, how much time do we have with water? You, you are correct. 15 <laughs> seconds, we are out of water. Sorry. Now, in reality, <laughs> our hose line, like the one we're about to pull, flows about 180 gallons a minute, that one line. So at 500 gallons, we'll get a couple minutes out of it. Today, we're not going to flow it at the maximum because we're here to show you some things. So that's why we go to hydrants and we hook up the big hydrants. And all the big, big, giant hose you see that's on a mat, like this size, this hooks up the hydrants, this big stuff. And all this smaller stuff, this is the hot hose we, that size, we stretch into your house or whatever building to put the fire out, all right? And then on top, you'll see a big, well, it's hard to see now, there, we call it a deck gun. There's a big nozzle on top. Those are for big, giant fires. And we can flow big, big, big water out of those things. And then we have our ladders. We can reach your windows and all that kind of stuff. So this is what's called an engine. There's also ladders in town. Everybody see a ladder truck before? A big giant thing, big ladder on the top. Yeah, we have two of those in town. So we have 100 feet of hose in that bumper, so we don't have a very long line. So we're gonna start the truck up, and you guys can see it flow a little bit of water. Sometimes it's hard to visualize how much water you there is in a, in, a, in a tank. So when we talk about 500 gallons, it sounds like a lot, right? Because it is a lot. So in your bathtub, you probably have about 50 gallons at the most. So a bathtub is 50 gallons of water. So we can put a lot of fire out with 50 gallons of water, believe it or not. So that basically wraps it up. I'm gonna open up the cabinets. I'll let you guys see what we have. We have a bunch of rescue equipment in there, like Jaws of Life. We go to car accidents, we cut the, cut people out of cars, cut the doors off, cut the roof off if you're trapped. Um, we have airbags, struts, all kinds of good stuff. All right? So let's open up some cabinets. You guys can take a walk around if you'd like. We have a bunch of ropes. We do a lot of rope uh, high angle, low angle rescues. We have uh, certain type of extinguishers for certain types of fires, like metal fires. We have struts, we could stabilize uh, vehicles or, or machinery or something in a collapse. We have ventilation, hydrant valves and all that. You come around this side, you're going to see all our big, big hose in the back. The cones. Yep, traffic cones. Who likes to play with blocks? Yeah, we like playing with blocks too. So all those blocks we use to stabilize uh, cars that went out after they've been wrecked so they don't move around and hurt the patient. All right? So we can walk around this side. More blocks. Then you have our hydraulic equipment. This stuff is like big giant scissors. All right? See those big scissors? We could cut the roof off your car, cut the doors off, cut bars on windows and fires. We have big spreaders to spread stuff open. We got all kinds of tools. So we, we like to call this the master key. It opens every door we come across. All right. We call it a set of irons. It's simply the axe. A really tough bar that we use to open up basically anything. All right. And here we have all kinds of 
stuff for the driver, adapters and spare nozzles and tools. We have a big winch on this truck. With this big winch, we could hook up tall points around the truck to help pull up something that went over the edge of a, a road or possibly uh, stabilize a vehicle, all right? So, who thinks uh, they want to be a firefighter? Anybody? Me. You do? I would never would have guessed. Any girls want to be firefighters? Me. Girls can be firefighters. We have a lot of them in our department. Yeah. Yeah. How about uh, paramedic? Anybody interested in being a paramedic, maybe? Doing some ambulance work? Because we hire paramedics, too. We make them firefighters too, but it's all good. If you guys ever want to stop and see a firehouse, stop at any firehouse and visit anytime you want. Right now with the corona thing, hang on a second. Right now with the corona thing, we're asking you to kind of wait till this whole coronavirus goes away. But once everything gets lifted up and all restrictions go away, come by and visit. And we'll show you around the station and see what all kinds of good stuff we have. All right, what's your question, buddy? So the most rewarding thing is a successful save whenever we come across somebody either in an accident or having a medical problem or uh, their house, we save their house or whatever case may be. That's the most rewarding thing, absolutely. Call 911 as soon as possible. Get out of the house as soon as possible. Try to alert everybody that's in the building you're in. If you're, you know, if maybe you're not in a single family, maybe in an apartment building, pull the alarm. Uh, keep your house clean. Keep it up to date with code. Make sure all your electrical stuff is in good order. Um, practice a fire uh, alarm system, you know, response. In other words, have a place to go to once you get out of the building, a meeting place where everybody agrees upon. In the wintertime, shovel the hydrant that's near your house so we could get to it quicker. It'll be in service. You guys have may have seen us shoveling hydrants in the wintertime. There are, may, there's, you know, north of a thousand hydrants in this town. And we try to shovel as many as we can, but a lot of times we run out of time. So if everybody could help do that that'd be that'd be awesome we go on a lot of covid calls um and we wear a lot of equipment more so than you've ever seen us before so like when scott goes on a call he wears what's basically a hazmat suit gown and a whole thing and no matter what medical call we go on because a lot of times some people are asymptomatic or don't have symptoms yet that may be contagious we don't know we don't know exactly so um, he showers many times a day. Every time he goes on one of these calls, he comes back to take a shower. So we appreciate that he's cleaner than he normally is. But uh, in all seriousness, it's for his health and everybody else's. So in the fire station, we're not as close as we normally are for those reasons. We try to keep distance between ourselves. We cook meals. We don't sit at one little table anymore like we normally do. Um, but we, we're adapting. We're, we're dealing with what's different. And so far to our success, we haven't had a single member get it get COVID yet and I hope it doesn't happen. Uh, a lot of other departments around us have and it's unfortunate. It's not that they necessarily did anything wrong, it's just the reality of so, so many people are gonna get it and that's just, just a fact. So we've been fortunate in West Hartford. I'm the apparatus operator, so I drive the truck uh, to and from the calls. Um, I help out with all the medical stuff. I, I pump the truck, um, I get all the rescue tools out. I, I get all the stuff ready for whatever call we're, we're going to at that time, whether it be a you know, rescue call, fire call, medical call. Um, the, the, big, the biggest problem we have probably driving two calls is people not um, going to the right or not hearing us and, and not getting out of our way when we're coming down. You know, we, we, we're not going, you know, the, the rush to intersections. We make sure it's clear before we go through, but when people don't get out of our way, it's, it's, it's tougher for us to get to the call. When you hear the fire truck, pull to the right. You hate to see somebody's house catch on fire, but it's gratifying going there and you know you could help them you know if, if, whether to get them out of the house if they are stuck in the house or medically if they're if somebody's sick um you know with all this going on with all this covid stuff you know we've seen a really uh, influx in medicals with that so you know we, we we go to you know help a lot of people that way so that's probably the biggest reward it's rewarding to be able to see your help uh in real time there are, there are a lot of things that we do like fire prevention where you go out and do your best to prevent things from happening in the future, but you don't get to see that action prevented later on. Uh, with medical calls, you can see how your your skills and your knowledge can affect and help someone in real time. West Hartford's awesome. I mean, it's it's a it's a tight knit community. Um, 
the town's really supportive of us. We, we support the town. We do everything we can for the town. Obviously, we're here today doing this stuff. Um, you know, we, we do whatever we can for this town, and they, they, they've been so generous to the fire department, too. Well, guys, thanks for coming. Enjoy your day. Thank you.